the time you watch this video, winter will be in full force up here in the Pacific Northwest. That's why today I want to talk about how to prepare for winter hiking because hiking in the winter is so much different than hiking in the summer. With winter hiking, you have more rain, more snow, colder weather, less daylight, shorter days, and some of the trails that you love hiking in the summer might not be accessible in the winter. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to get notified anytime I add new videos. All right, let's go. The first thing you have to do when preparing for a winter hike is to figure out where you want to go. One of my favorite resources for finding new trails to hike and getting information on trails in general is the hiking guide on the Washington Trails Association website. When looking for, say, a snowshoe hike, type in snowshoe in the hike name field. From here, all hikes in the WTA database that are considered a snowshoe hike will pop up. You can dial down your search by searching for hikes by region, trails features and rating, parking pass entry fee, and by mileage and elevation. When choosing a winter hike, make sure you choose your destination wisely. Your favorite summer hike might be dangerous terrain in the winter. You'll want to choose a safe, low technical, low avalanche risk route. All of this information can be found on WTA when you're searching for a particular hike. Another option is to visit a snow park, which are parking lots that are cleared and maintained by the Washington State Department of Natural Resources during the winter. I'll put a link in the description below on where you can access more information about all of the snow parks here in Washington State. You can also consider joining a guided snowshoe trip, a fantastic local nonprofit agency that offers guided hikes, backpacking trips, and snowshoe hikes throughout the year is the Mountaineers. Trips range from basic to beginner and intermediate. For more information, visit the Mountaineers website to search for current local activities like snowshoe hikes and day hikes, which are led by volunteers. I'll include the link in the description below. Okay, so you've decided on where you wanna go. The next thing you'll wanna do is check the conditions. You'll want to check the conditions for the trail, road conditions, and the weather forecast both the day before and the day of your trip. For recent trip reports and trail alerts, check the page for the trail you're planning on hiking on the WTA website. WTA does a great job posting any current trail alerts to each trails page, like if the area is closed, the road is impassable by vehicle, or even if the area is known to be avalanche prone during the winter. These alerts will be at the top of the page. To find trip reports for any given hike on the WTA's website, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the trails page. Trip reports are sorted by date with the most recent trip report being listed first. Here you will find first-hand information from others who have hiked the trail before and have taken the time to write about their experience in hopes of helping others coming behind them. You'll often get updated trail conditions, trailhead and road conditions, suggestions on various routes or lunch spots, encounters they had on trail with other hikers or animals, photos from their trip, and sometimes even links to videos they made about their hike. The information I found while researching recent trip reports for any hike I plan on doing has been worth their weight in gold. Always check the trip reports. And if there isn't a recent trip report for the winter hike or snowshoe you want to do, that could be a sign that the trail isn't easily accessible during the winter due to rain, road washout, avalanche terrain, or major tree blowdowns. Road conditions are important to check before doing a winter hike, especially if you plan on traveling over the passes. Head on over to the WSDOT Roads Conditions page and search for the pass you intend on traveling over for your hike. I'll leave a link for this one in the description below. Another thing you'll want to check before your winter hike, especially the day before and the day of, is weather. And keep in mind, checking the weather on your phone won't always be 100% accurate. To get the most accurate weather forecast for the area you plan on traveling in, check the mountain weather forecast. From the trail page on the WTA website, look underneath the map and click on See Weather Forecast. This will take you to the National Weather Service page, giving you current conditions at that specific location noted on the WTA's page, as well as provide an extended forecast for the area over the next four days. One more condition you'll want to check before doing a winter hike is the avalanche forecast. This one is really important to check during the winter time. You can get the current avalanche forecast through the Northwest Avalanche Center's website, otherwise known as NWAC. Definitely check this one both the day before and the day of your planned trip. 
If the forecast is marking the area you plan on traveling to as either high or extreme, I'd suggest either finding another destination with a lower danger scale or picking another activity to do that day instead. NWAC's website will provide a current and detailed avalanche forecast on a daily basis during the winter months. NWAC is an excellent resource, which I will of course include a link for in the description below. For every hike you go on, no matter what time of the year it is, you should always put together an itinerary of your trip and leave it with someone whom you trust that isn't going on the trip with you. Or at least tell someone who's not going with you where you're going. Why? Well, in case something happens to you when you're out on trail, say you get injured or you get lost or the car doesn't start or your car breaks down and you don't have cell service. If someone who's not on the trip with you is expecting your arrival at a certain time and they can't get a hold of you and you haven't come back, they will then be able to alert the authorities to come send help to find you. If no one knows where you are and no one is expecting your return, you risk getting stuck out in the middle of nowhere without having anyone alert authorities to come send for help. So leave your planned itinerary with someone who's not going on the trip with you. So a friend, a family member, a roommate, and also give them a time frame of your expected return. This way, if you don't return within that time frame and they can't get a hold of you, they can alert authorities to help come find you. It's important to note here that if you give someone your planned itinerary, stick to that itinerary. This way they know where to go find you. If you change your destination after giving your itinerary to someone at home and they have to send search and rescue to come find you, this can make search and rescue efforts really difficult. Make it easy to be found should you need to be found. Some other safety precautions you should take before your winter hike. Think about the possible dangers and challenges you could face on your hike. Do you have the right gear? Are you strong enough to be hiking in that type of terrain? Do you have an emergency kit in your car should your car break down? Is your car winter ready? Parking permits? Seasonal parking permits? Is a requirement for having snow chains in the car? Before going on a winter hike, try to figure out your travel time and set a turnaround time. A trail you hike in the summer could take you far less time to travel than when traveling in the winter. Winter travel is slow and physically exhausting. Include that when you're figuring out your travel time and your turnaround time. Remember there's less daylight, so even if you don't make it to your intended destination, still stick to your intended turnaround time, otherwise you risk hiking back to the car in the dark. I could make a whole video on winter hiking clothing. Oh wait, I did. Check out my video on winter hiking clothing where I talk about my own winter hiking clothing layering system, including my base layers, mid layers, outer layers, footwear, and other winter hiking clothing essentials. I could make a whole video on winter hiking gear. Oh wait, I did that one too. Check out my video on winter hiking gear where I talk about all the gear I use on trail, including my pack, my two-way messaging SOS device, as well as winter hiking specific gear like gloves, trekking poles with snow baskets, micro spikes, and snowshoes. In that video, I also share with you a couple tips on how to attach your snowshoes to your pack, as well as some tips on making winter hiking more warm and comfortable as possible. When talking about winter hiking gear, it's also important to mention the 10 essentials. And this is something you should always have with you on every trip you go on. No matter what time of the year you're hiking, always come prepared for the worst case scenario. The 10 essentials are navigation, shelter, extra clothing, extra water, extra food, sun protection, fire, a knife, and a first aid kit. Always, always, always have these items in your pack whenever you go hiking year round. You never know when you get stuck out on trail longer than you anticipated or find yourself needing to help someone else. Having the 10 essentials helps increase your chances of surviving a dire situation out on trail should you find yourself in a pickle out there. Okay, so you figured out where you want to go. You've checked all the conditions, you've put together a trip itinerary and left it with someone who's not going on the trip with you. You've made sure to pack the right gear for the conditions. You've got your 10 essentials in your pack. Now, I wanna give you a few winter hiking tips that will help make your time out there even better and safer. 
snowshoeing and winter hiking require more energy than warm weather hiking. You also have less sunlight making for shorter days out on trail. Anticipate slower snow travel and give yourself extra time to switch out gear like taking off layers or putting them back on or even consulting your navigation system to make sure you're still on trail. Be ready to turn around when trail conditions go beyond your skill level. Conditions can change quickly in the mountains during the winter. Don't forget to pick a turnaround time, even if you haven't reached your intended destination. Know how to use a map and compass. Know how to use your GPS to track yourself. Know how to communicate with your satellite device if you have one. Use the Gaia app with the Garmin in reach and make sure you download your maps ahead of time to each of these systems before getting on trail. Try storing all electronics and batteries as close to your body as possible. The cold weather can zap and drain batteries and electronics. Be prepared to use paper maps should your electronics fail. Stay hydrated and snack often. Drink water consistently. Avoid using a hydration reservoir with a tube during the winter because it oftentimes those tubes can freeze. Instead, use a Nalgene bottle for your water and store it upside down in case the water freezes. This way, the water will freeze from the bottom of the bottle, making the water at the top still drinkable. You tend to burn more calories when it's cold out, so make a mental note to snack every hour and on the go if needed. Take shorter breaks during winter so your body never has a chance to get cold. Recognize the signs of hypothermia, which tend to be uncontrollable shivering, bad coordination, drowsiness, confusion, and abnormally slow breathing. Here are a few ways you can prevent hypothermia. Wear wool and synthetic clothes because they still help to insulate you even if they're damp. Bring an extra set of gloves. In addition to a pair of liner gloves, I also always pack a pair of waterproof snow mittens and hand warmers. I also always pack an extra pair of socks with me on trail, just in case my feet get wet. Make a point to change into dry clothing as soon as you stop moving. Whenever I stop for a break, I always put on an insulating layer to keep myself from getting cold. And for extra comfort, leave a set of dry clothes in the car to change into after your hike. If you get hypothermia, take quick action. First and foremost, keep moving. Try warming up your body with dry clothing or warm drink. If you can, get out of the cold weather as quickly as possible, whether it's a car or emergency shelter. If your symptoms get worse, get off trail and seek medical attention immediately. Always stay hydrated. It's hard in the winter to drink water because you might not feel thirsty, but sometimes you have to force yourself to keep drinking water no matter how cold it is. Pro tip, pack a warm drink for your winter hikes. Before each winter hike, inspect your tires and car. Make sure you have plenty of gas. Have snow tires with studs or carry snow chains and know how to put them on correctly. It's always a good idea to carry snow chains in your car. Some places like Mount Rainier and Mount Baker require them to be in the car during the winter months. It's a good idea to pack an emergency kit in the car with blankets, extra clothing, extra food, water, a shovel, flashlight, first aid kit, jumper cables. You never know when you're gonna get stuck in the car whether it's from the car breaking down or if they close the pass due to bad weather. Always be prepared for the worst case scenario. Be sure to check the description below for links to all the resources that I mentioned in this video. Also include a link for a free online course through NWAC covering the basics for backcountry winter recreation. Got questions about winter hiking? Leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy trails and keep on trekking.